What's up, everyone, everybody, beautiful people. Welcome back to That Conversation with Tariq Ali. And today we're having that conversation with my friend Taylor. Hello, guys. Hello, hello. Oh, my gosh. So if you are not new to me, if you've watched my videos and you know me from YouTube, you have seen Taylor before. <laughs> the cookout video. <laughs> okay, like we've done several videos together. Yeah, um, we did. So you've seen Taylor before. Taylor, for the people on the podcast, the people that are new to me, um, Taylor is one of my college friends. Yes. Um, and it's so funny when you say that, like in college, you would take that as an insult. Like, why aren't, why aren't I your real friend? But as you get older, it's just like putting a place of where you met someone and where they meant like so much to you yes because you were a vital part in like my college years very true i agree i, re- <laughs> no, you I agree. literally <laughs> remember seeing you in uh what was it was it plant biology where do we meet we i, I remember coming up to you because you, you were friends with richard or something and he was showing me a video of you and then i was like oh i've seen that on video youtube of you. yeah we met at the library we met at the library i, I randomly came up to you and introduced myself <laughs> yes so oh this is bringing back so many memories yes. if you watch my youtube um richard is the guy from the video the very first video i think i did with a dude on my channel a straight dude where i was getting him to do all of these things that were deemed queer or gay or feminine um and i did it to just show that you can do feminine things and it doesn't change your sexuality yeah and that was like my that first was on twitter yeah, yeah. But like it went like viral everywhere and that's when i started do- doing the series of that um, just, you know, that the, it was fun. It was using fun and comedy to have a conversation about, you know, hypermasculinity and how men are so uncomfortable with these things. But it was such a plot twist mm-hmm. when he was like comfortable in his sexuality. He was like, you yeah, can put makeup care. on me, man. It's not a big deal. Like, I was like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> shit, it backfired. But it actually was amazing yeah. because it really showed the audience like they're like what it looked like to be comfortable. comfortable and like he was like i was like which what a lot you... of men aren't actually a lot of straight men are not <laughs> it's, it, like what it's crazy 90 percent of them and and it was just interesting to see he was like man you can put makeup on me that doesn't mean i like god <laughs> and i was like i was like but this is gonna be in front of millions of people you don't care he was like i was like what if they all call you gay he's like i don't care, I don't care. Right, that, that doesn't make me gay yeah exactly um, but anyways, so I did that video and she is friends. She was friends with Richard. And then that's yep. how we became. He was my study partner. And then yeah. he, he showed me the video. And then I, you were in my plant biology class. I always looked at you. I was like, he's very attractive. You did. You did. I did. Taylor will always look at me right and look like, hey. I'm like, well, I love. Okay. So Taylor, me and Taylor were both bio majors. Yes. Um, and we made it, by the way. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. made it. We both, we are bio uh, graduates. Yes. That Kumade, is, and, right? Did you graduate Kumade? Magna. Oh, Mag. Okay. I'm Kum Lottie. He's Magna. <laughs> okay, Magna. You know, you know me. So I'm joking. But um, yeah. So I don't know. And the funny thing is, um, so this podcast. Have you ever listened to my podcast? Be I honest, listen to. Be you. honest. No, but I li- I watch your like the stuff you post yeah, on yeah. Instagram, like your videos and everything. Okay. I love your videos on Instagram. Okay. No, it's really Such okay because I think that podcasts. Um, for the people that have been listening to podcasts, they know what it's like. They get into a new podcast. They try it out. If you're not used to consuming podcasts then you see a friend's making one and you're like, okay, I'm supporting. I like the video on Instagram, but yeah. I don't want to listen to it. So I really don't take well, it personally. I want to listen to your podcast though. Maybe I'll do, I didn't even know you did podcasts. I'm like, <laughs> Period. Yeah. And this is what I love about this because, um, in my podcast, the reason I'm asking, it's called that conversation. So on my channel, well, on my channel, I'm so used to saying that <laughs> on my podcast, um, we come here to have the hard conversation conversations that help us grow okay um and so i love that but you know every episode a lot of my episodes right now are very like <laughs> you know me <laughs> crying and healing yeah and i love it we i have love it to. we have but to cry the, and heal but at the same time during healing process you gotta chill you gotta relax you gotta have fun you gotta have friends you gotta have that conversation that isn't you know it's just all about that yeah. and i think it's more about the journey than it is me getting on the mic and being exactly. a preacher every single time so in this episode i really want to catch up um and i think this episode is a catch-up episode not only for my audience because i haven't done a podcast like i just told you in a while yeah um and just a catch-up between me and you and yes. new people can learn me as you get to learn the new me as a person who knew me before yes um and, and i feel like this is great for my healing too because i need a lot of that <laughs> pour the wine because you already know we gonna get into it child. pour the um, wine so look let me just say, I am on keto right now, so I'm breaking it for you. Oh my gosh! Um, I don't do I it love long you. term. I'm so sorry. I just started like two days ago because I was on vacation for two weeks. But 
Is it just is it just because you want to be healthier? It, it helps my stomach feel better. Okay. I, you remember in college, I had like a sensitive stomach? Yeah. Didn't I tell you that a lot? Yeah. Yeah. And so, but we still ate a lot of like... Oh. The Korean, oh. You know what comes to my mind? That Korean place. Blossom uh, Tree. Yes. Yeah. Blossom Tree is Blossom so Blossom Tree. Good. Downtown Atlanta, girl. Oh, my God. Downtown I think the last Atlanta, time I ate that was with you. Ooh, the Bim Bim Bob. Oh, my God. And then the also, tacos. The tacos. Girl, if y'all go there, get the... Okay, the sweet look, potatoes. Me and Taylor ate. Okay. <laughs> She's a foodie like me. Such and a foodie. We, we love we, trying new places. Before we even sat down to do this, we're like, where are we going to eat? <laughs> where are we eating? <laughs> we're foodies. So the thing is, I would eat everything I wanted, but I would be suffering. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, not so, I was okay. I was just always in the bathroom. Yeah. Um, Did but you try now, probiotics? Child tried everything. Oh, I went to gastroenterologist, so all that. But it's just my stomach. It, it runs in my family. We all have this like sensitive stomach with like carbs and dairy. So... It's yeah. fine. It's just I do this to like reset my gut and to like just clean it out. Right. Yeah. But anyways, um, I'm saying this to say that I don't stock up my liquor because, you know, ca- like carbs. Carbs. And, and yeah. So, and not so also, do you, are you not drinking either? You don't drink? Tequila. Okay. That's that's keto friendly. Tequila, you yeah, mean. Yeah, just, just tequila. <laughs> but so I'm saying this all to say that this wine <laughs> is not the best. I don't know what it is. Um, I think I probably left the top off. Oh my god, it's really <laughs> spoiled. You wanna try it? Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know me. Always, you wanna still drink it. Always now, I'm still gonna drink it. Oh, so college days. Okay, give me a I cup. actually love cheap wine, I'm not gonna lie. No. But oh what by the way. Say? No, no, you know said it's cheap. <laughs> I just said the top was wine. off. I ain't say it was you cheap. You said you said it's not a good wine. So I I'm, said the but, top was off. Why are you eating on cheap wine? It is cheap, it's from Vaughn. <laughs> <laughs> cheap wine is great. I yeah, love cheap period. Wine. Okay. Um, how do you say Pinot? How do you say it? Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm just killing me. I'm sorry. I'm an ass. Uh, Pinot Noir. But that's French. Pinot Noir. If you're an American, you are going to say Noir. Like, yeah, I'm it like makes Pinot Noir. Sense. Yeah, okay. it's just because I speak French. I, it was um, just Can cute. you pour a little bit more? I want you to taste it first. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> we are sick. That it gives liquor. Definitely spoiled. It gives liquor. Yep. It's not spoiled. It's just become liquor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how. Yeah. We're so, still going to drink it. It's yeah, fine. Yeah, we are. We'll be fine. It's definitely. Mm, you left that top off, girl. Yeah. A little bit. A little bit. We but are such isn't wine. Is it like that already? Sp- wine is spoiled. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. It's just if you let it brew and. Um, I think like it the makes yeast, you drunk If you faster. let it do it more. It's like root beer. I remember in the science camp, we made root beer, but she was like, don't let it sit too long. It'll become beer. <laughs> You know, so it's like if you let it, I think it's just going to be stronger. It's more toxic. But that's there we what, go. That's what that's we need. That's what liquor is, though. Yeah. It's toxic. It's and people don't toxic. realize that it's because it's been. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, that's going back to science. Um, but, okay. Okay. Um, how you been? Let's start oof, with you. Oof, oof, oof. Oof. I have not been okay this year. It's been a very bad year for me. I'm not going to lie to you, but I'm getting better. I'm, that's why I came to Cali. Actually, it's my first time in Cali, and I absolutely love it. Um, but yeah, it's been really rough. Um, I went through a really traumatic breakup. Same. <sighs> oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. We can we can bond over that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even tell them, but the reason this was such a moment for us is because we were really close in college, y'all. Like yeah. we saw each other every day. We I haven't um, seen him in two years. And she didn't even know I had a podcast, <laughs> so I that did, tells you. I know. Um, we we don't we don't keep up. That's just adulthood. But we love each other. Like she was so like, much. I'm gonna be in LA. Are you gonna be there? And I'm like, bitch, yeah. I was girl. so excited to see him. So excited. It's like a breath of fresh air. Yeah. So we're really really catching up. Yeah. Because we don't know anything about what, each other's about lives. Our lives right now. Yeah. It's so yeah, crazy. I I I went through a really harsh breakup. Was uh, this with um? Don't the say one his I, name. The one right? I met. No, the one I met. I feel like you. Which? When did you meet him? Um, we on the phone. Yeah, you called me once. No. Okay. No. Different one. You did meet him. Yeah. He came to we Atlanta. Went to, we, we went to, to the strip dinner. club. Yes. We went to the strip club. And I passed out. Yeah. Right? Okay. <laughs> it's coming back, guys. Yes. Okay. You did meet him. Yes. He was a sweetheart, right? Yeah. He was a sweetheart. He was a sweetheart. But so was. Who? Which one? <laughs> Oof. Taylor, girl. Ooh, that heart, girl. She down bad, girl. I know, a little bit. <laughs> it's okay. But what you do got to do is make sure them... Uh, okay, because we on camera, girl. Oh, my God. You know you, girl. Please tell me, okay? I will let you this know. This happens all the time. <laughs> Fucking nip slips. 
Can we take that part out? It's going to be a hilarious episode. I know. Okay, but no. Let's okay. Have. All right. <laughs> Stop it. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, my God. I love you. You're going to have to watch the visuals. I I love you. Okay, but anyways. Okay. um, Anyways, back to the cooking show. No, but seriously. um, (laughs) Yes. Let's talk about yours. Okay. What happened? Because you guys looked so happy, I thought, with your traumatic relationship. Um, Okay, well, it was... I... um, (laughs) You know when it's so much, you don't really know where to start. I know. I know. Um, That's how it's going to be with me, too. I'm going to just keep it... First thing on the mind, I was in love with him. He was my first real time being in love. Yeah. Because you remember my boyfriend before that. Yes. Um, but this was my first time being in love, like to the point where he was my world. Like when we were in public, it, we used to say all the time that it felt like a movie, like no one else was real. Um, we didn't care about other people's opinions. We didn't care about other people's judgment. Like we would leave the house looking crazy crazy um for a year and a half just like going to eat and like just like everyone else felt fake yeah it didn't matter we only cared about each other and we created a world where it was just us those are the best loves but they're also the hardest to get over i know because (laughs) the thing is it's beautiful when you go to the moon with the person you're in love with but what happens when it's just you two on that on that earth or that moon and it's toxic yeah because then you created a world where it's just you two and you don't know how to get out and yeah. so it was it became mentally and emotionally abusive um oh, no. and it was very toxic but um <clears throat> it hurt but i knew that all of what was happening was not how can I say? It was stuff. It was demons that weren't my job to fight. Yeah. It was all his, all his shit. Really? And I was the only one in his world. And I was the only one that actually held his feelings. And so I'm really getting into it. Wow. I just feel that <laughs> I like, <love> it. <laughs> I don't want to get too much into it because I do want to still do it. Well, I, I don't care. Stop yeah. thinking too much about it. To yeah. Um, I love just, how you talk to yourself like that. I need to start doing that. <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. <laughs> it's a power. Yes. It helps me you so hold much. The power. It I helps it. me so much. But um, I just, for so long, I tried to fight his demons with him. Because mm-hmm. I was in love with him. And I saw him fighting these demons. And I was like, no, I can help. But then it became a thing where it started to feel like they were my demons. And it would be my fault if we didn't defeat them. Yeah, that's toxic for sure. And I, be- it just, it was a lot. But how long ago did you guys break up officially? I'm sure you, were y'all on up, and off. You know how you break up several times. Yeah, and, I was and gonna I'm, say and I'm gonna, the same thing. This and the toxic okay? ones. So we, I broke up <laughs> with him for the first time Halloween last year. Crazy, right? Wow. I know, right? Okay. Um, Halloween, um, and then. I, uh, we were broken up, but Thanksgiving came around and he's, he's, uh, not from America. I don't want to get to, well, everybody know at this point, if you really follow me, he's, he's from Africa. I'm not going to say the country, but he's from (laughs) Africa. So he didn't have family here. Yeah. And so I was just like, you know, come home with me. I don't want you to be alone on Thanksgiving. I was still in love with him. I know. Um, even though that Halloween breakup was a real bad one. Why? What made it bad? Oh, I'm not getting into that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you tried it, girl. You, you well, thought you we'll was Oprah that. for a second, we'll get girl. We'll over lunch. You thought you was Oprah, girl. <laughs> we can get that. To, yeah, okay. Um, it was real bad. It was a stunt. No. Oh. He was a stunt puller. You know? Like, it was just like a like a crazy night. And the next day, you're like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. That kind of stuff. That's the worst. Um, and so it was one in Halloween, and then... He did one when he came for Thanksgiving in D.C., in Maryland, with Mm -hmm. my family. And then I left and came home, and that was his second stunt, and I was done with him. And I didn't talk to him for four months. But then a friend was like, oh, I'm having a dinner, and, you know, he's going to be there. I just wanted to let you know, so that if you don't want to come. But I was like, I think I'm fine. You thought. Four months (laughs) after, I was like, I think I'm fine. I think I'm good. But then... Um, I was like, okay, I don't, this is my friend's event and I don't want to make it about me. Yeah. And so I was like, well, maybe I should call him before to just see how I feel. Yeah. And so I did and it felt okay. And so when I saw him, girl, we had sex. (laughs) (laughs) Just get to the point. Okay. I knew that was coming. (laughs) Yeah. We just, yeah, it just happened, man. 
Um, and so was it great? I bet it was great after four. Oh yep, my that gosh. toxic Ooh. makeup sex after Ooh. a while. Oh, I know. We woke, Ooh. but this is what, and I kind of felt the next morning. I I woke up, and it felt like five months before, and it made me sad a little, but it gave me comfort because during that breakup. That's all I wanted was love. Yep. Especially when you've never been in love yep. like that. You're all so I'm... used to that comfort. It's so easy to fall back into it. I know. And it was so... I'm going to talk about this when I do a breakup episode. I haven't really... This is my first time ever talking about my breakup wow. this much. Okay. Um, but the love that I felt from him reminded... It was the love that I was searching for in this world. I Because you know my thing with my mom and my dad. So I never really... He was filling those holes a little bit. Yeah. Like, it, you can never fill it all the way. Like, nobody can ever be mommy and daddy. But he, out of he every, everywhere I ran to for it, whether it was money, bags, everything, he filled it up the most. Wow. And so when I lost him, I was still, like, whoa. Depressed. Whoa. And so when I had that moment and I woke up, I was sad because I was like, what did the last four or five months mean? Because I was yeah. healing, bitch. I was doing the work. And then, but then I really just fell into that you go comfort ten again. Ten steps back, yeah. Ten steps forward and twenty steps back. Actually, I know, yeah. I know the feeling. Oh. And it felt like it was gonna work because, <laughs> of course, of course, I didn't jump right back into it. Okay, I'm not crazy, you know. <laughs> so I was like, you know, I was like, you know, this ain't what you think it is. I'm an independent woman, you know. I was yeah. trying to, you know, but um. I, we got to get into the ways that you healed, too, during those four months. Because oh, absolutely. Whatever, whatever you were doing, I, I need absolutely, to know. <laughs> absolutely. That's honestly what I've been talking about because in my podcast. Yeah, it's been, what, seven months since my breakup, and I am not healed. But I know it's because I kept going back. And it takes time. I know. And it also depends on how deep that love was. And a lot of our traumas are what not only got us in that relationship, mm -hmm. but kept us in that relationship when we knew it was toxic. Yeah. I feel like with my ex, the love that was there was more on my end. Like, I was way more in love with him than he was with me. Why do you think that? Oh, a lot of reasons. I Oof. mean, <laughs> I mean, it all started back in January when he cheated <clears throat> on me with his ex-girlfriend. Well, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. And then, you know, it was really bad. And then a month later, I we got back together trying to fix things and then it got as after he cheated on me the first time it just got pro progressively worse yeah. it was my co-worker and then he was like oh i can hurt her and, and yeah. she'll stay yeah pretty much so yeah and i kept saying <laughs> that's the problem <laughs> i need more wine <laughs> But yeah, so it's oh, been babe, a... Oh, you're hurting. I am. It's really rough. <laughs> he knows my ex before this ex. And I never really healed from that relationship because I just jumped into a new one. And, um, but he, you know, mm. like I was never, my heart was never in that relationship, unfortunately. Like, yeah. But, yeah. and it, 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 this was all a big lesson though, because I thought the grass was greener and it wasn't. And I just wish I treated him way better than I did because now I know how it feels to be you know, treated like a second option and just like not loved fully. And I don't know. It's, yeah, it's like, I feel like this relationship was my karma basically is what I'm trying to say, which I hate to think of it like that, but you don't think I just that you would do things different. I would do things. Number one, very let's call them number one. Number one. You yeah. don't think you treated number one, right? I just feel like since my heart wasn't in it, I should have got out that relationship sooner instead of just like jumping out of one and jumping into a new one because that hurt him obviously like very bad. And even before the end though, like during the relationship, how do you feel you treated him? I just, I kind of was with him for the wrong reasons. I was like, you know, he could be a husband. I told you this before. Yeah, like he could yeah. be a husband. Like he would, he's a good, he was so good to me. So sweet. I mean, he would have done anything for me. He you made know? sense. He made sense, you he know? He was a sweetheart. He was so sweet. He loved me to pieces. He but was the sweetest guy ever. Ever. And like, but I still like him. love him. I, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Like that. You know what I mean? I wasn't in love. Like, yeah, I just, exactly. I never felt that in love feeling. And I should have, I sh if once mm. I knew that, I should have, it wasn't fair to either one of us to stay in that relationship, you know, yeah. when I didn't feel in love like he felt. And so, yeah. That, I'm is, just, that, I'm that is one side of it. I'm sorry to cut you off. No, you're but fine. I just... I just want to always offer like some type of grace. So yeah. like that's one side of it. Like, oh, 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 she's, I want more. I want I, more. I want more. Please. I want more. Please it's give okay. me more. It's okay. 
you can have so much. Yes. Oh, but thank you. I want to provide the other side of that because one side of it is, yeah, taking accountability and saying, hey, yes. I shouldn't have used you as a placeholder. And yes. I knew I wasn't into you, but you were a good guy. So I kept you around. Yes. Um, but the other side of that is you needed love. Yeah, I did. And you needed you clearly needed someone there. You, you I don't, you, I'm not going to tell you what you felt, but the side of that is that also like I needed love and he was giving that to me and he was a good lover. Yes, he was. Yeah. He was such a good lover. Um, yeah, I'm telling you, if I could go back, I would do things so differently, but obviously I feel like the, tw your twenties, like these are the lessons that you have to learn to Come grow. So, I mean, yeah, but it's, it's rough. I mean, cause I, now I feel like I'm kind of dealing with two breakups cause I never, and the sad part was when I, how I knew I wasn't in love with him too was because he was gone for two weeks after we officially broke up. And I was like, <clears throat> I don't, I didn't miss him. And like, that made me really sad Yeah. because I know he missed me. And that's so like, it's heartbreaking to think about that because now it's like with my <clears throat> number two, we'll call him number two. Yeah. It's like the opposite. It's like, I miss him and love him so much, even after everything he's done to me. Mm -hmm. And like, he's probably not even thinking about me right now. And it's just, it's really, it's a shitty feeling. So yeah, I don't know. I just, I learned a big lesson in all of this, you know, like, you know, be kind and love those who love you for sure. <laughs> that's my, that's my lesson. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. A lot that's of, that's so crazy. I know. I had a similar, you know, my number one. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't, you know. Everybody knows. Yeah, no, I could tell. <laughs> I could tell a huge difference. I'll tell you that a huge difference. I, I, he was so sweet. He was so sweet. He was a good boyfriend. Yep. He, he got me gifts. Um, didn't have the most money, but he would use his last dime to I get know, me a gift. I know. I remember. And I remember. He made him. me feel good. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't head over heels. That wasn't like, my best friend. Yeah, like you. Yeah, I know. He what was you a mean. boyfriend. Yeah. He was a boyfriend. Um, and, and, and to even like widen this and to step back and look at the big picture, um, it's just like those jobs, right? It's like that job you don't love, but it pays the bills. Mm -hmm. You're not so crazy about it, but like it does what it's supposed to do. It's not the worst. Um, and so, you know, or if you pick something that you're good at that you don't really enjoy that much, but I'm good at it, it's going to make me good money. Yeah. It's comfort. You know what? Oh, it's playing I'm, it safe. You're fine. I'm stuck there too. I'm like, I, even after getting my bio degree, I'm like, I don't know. I feel like I just don't even know myself right now. I'm like, I'm trying hmm. to learn about myself more because I'm like, I don't even know what I really enjoy. What's my passion. I feel like I don't have that. And that's kind of, that kind of makes me feel stuck and like kind of sad too. Cause I'm like. Where is my passion? Like, what do I love to do? What 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 is a job that would make me happy, you know? Yeah. I'm struggling with that really yeah. bad. Happy and, you know, obviously pay the bills because I'm a little bougie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm it's, working three jobs right now. You become accustomed to a certain lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. See, that's the thing. My, my lifestyle, too. Like, I, I work three jobs. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a dancer. And then which got me through college. Um, mm. But I actually had to get another job because I got really depressed after college because I was doing that job too much. And just the drinking and being objectified like four days out the week is just too much. So I can only yeah. do that job like once or twice a week. Um, so then I started cocktail waitressing at um, Blue Martini. And then I became a bottle girl at a club called Ember. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I can't do this forever. I'm not yeah. going to be young and hot forever. So what am I going to do? <laughs> I don't know yet. I can't figure out. I don't know if I want to go back to school. The one thing I can tell you that I am good at is school. I love school. I love studying and just like, I don't know. It's a good feeling when you make an A on an exam and you work so hard for it. Like it's yeah. stressful, but yeah. I, I love that feeling, yeah. you know? But other than that, I'm like, I don't, what do I go back to school for? You know? Yeah. You know what? <sighs> so rough. Our generation, um, I, I love just like anthropology and just looking at society over generations. You know me, I'm a geek. Yeah, um, <laughs> you so, are. But the thing is, what I love about our generation is, um, see, the thing is, three generations before, and it's different for me because I'm black, but like three generations before, it was like, whatever job you can get, get, get it, it and yeah. use that to pay your bills. Very true. And then the generation after, that's my grandparents. Mm -hmm. The generation after that, which I feel like is our parents, um, is... Find something you're good at and get a job in that. Yes. And then I think this generation is starting to realize that, oh, 
is not just about what I'm good at. It's about what I enjoy, right. what I want to exactly. do. And that, it's ladies so and gentlemen, hard. is what privilege and most white people have been doing for centuries. Yeah. <laughs> is, you know, you know, rich Absolutely. kids, you're like asking them, what do you want to do? Absolutely. Oh, I think I want to come out with a lip kit. <laughs> Uh, but sickening (laughs) you know girl i mean just like especially people who grow up in money too you know the ability to just say oh this is what i want to do now my fly is open (laughs) this is what i want to do and let's do it but i think that um in that transition i think it's beautiful but we don't have the tools every generation we're figuring out new things about ourselves and where we want to go with our careers and i mean you worked at that job for 30 years and it took you 10 years to get a promotion and then you don't even like it that much you be stressed when you come home but it do pay you well right i don't want to live that life no so i think this this generation we're trying to do things we love and everyone's starting these businesses but there's no strategy there's no tools to do it absolutely and so when people we all approach finding what we're going to do the way that our parents taught us. Yeah. What are you good at? Exactly. What are you good at and make that into a career? But I don't think that that's a great method. I think no. that that's only half of the method. Because then you're not going to be happy. Yeah. Because, I mean, you could be happy. See, a lot of times people think they're happy about things that they're good at that they make a career because of the validation that they get from doing it. Like, for example, yes. like you just said, the A's. Mm-hmm. It wasn't the actual work. It was the, oh, I got an A, bitch. Yeah. I'm smart. The paycheck. The validation. I yeah, but that, the validation. Once that validation is out, you're like, okay, well, I don't really want to do this. Yeah, exactly. You know, if there was no money, it if there was no the grade after it, would you still do it? Right. And so what no. I think, uh, <laughs> yeah, That's a good way to think about it. Hell no. You wouldn't do it, girl. No, I would not. I would. I'm a geek. <laughs> I still be reading shit for free. Really? <laughs> oh, I read. I like to read too. Yeah. But like, yeah, but that's, and I think the other side of that is like, yeah, it's what you're good at. But the other side of it is like, what is your purpose or passion? And that's very hard to find because we've never been given the tools to do it. But honestly, I've just been looking at my route and how I found mine. And I just look at every single job I've worked, every single thing I've done, and what about each one of those. Even if you hated the job, what did you like about it? Right. Like, what was the one thing you liked? Like, and if you, if I look at my route, like I did... I worked at Six Flags was my first job. You worked at Six Flags? I was a no clown. No way. Oh my God. Bro. For Fright for fright Fest. Fright Fest? Yeah. No freaking I was way. Like, <laughs> 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 Did you ever do that again? <laughs> yeah, I was a clown, bitch. And I loved it because That's amazing. I, I, I would was, run the opposite way, by the I way. I was so I good. You. <laughs> I was so good. I like won this like employee award. Like I was scary. You know what freaks me out the most about clowns is I feel like most serial killers, they don't have like emotion, but clowns have so much emotion and that's what that's freaks why I was me so out great about at it. it. I was out crying. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to play with me. Who did your makeup? Oh, they, it's a whole glam squad. Oh, wow. Okay. You know, but that's why I loved it. See, I did it because I wanted to be an actor my entire life. And there was no opportunities. I didn't feel around me in Maryland to act. So I was like, this is the closest thing. And we do makeup. There's costumes. I felt like I was acting. And so it felt like every day, this is my that, stage. That's crazy that you say that because I always wanted to be an actor too. I was in theater all throughout high school. There you go, Tay. Yeah, middle school and high school. There you go, Tay. The monologues and everything. I did yeah. it all. <laughs> let me... Let me oh, so, Six Flags. I'm, I'm not going to get to Six Flags. Six Flags and then Ben and Jerry's and then healthcare, working in hospitals, right? But through all of that, I realized that I love making people feel good. Yes, and, and you're I, so good at that. You uh-huh. are. I always talk... Every time I talk about you, I'm like, he's such a light and just like... You just want to be around him. You're Aww. like... Yeah. I've always thought that about you. You're crazy. You know that. <laughs> I do. But I it's know nice that... It's nice to hear. <laughs> no, I... Because it, it means so much to me. Like, yeah. that's my passion. And, you're, and yeah. so through every single thing that I do, if it's not healing people or helping them grow and making them feel better, I don't want to do it. I yeah. don't care if it comes with $10 million. I don't want to do it. Yeah, um, absolutely. And so that's that's how I found my passion is that my passion and my purpose, my purpose on this earth is to heal, to help people heal. And so through everything While you're I healing ever do. Too. So yeah. and it's like, and there's a lot of ways you can do that. Yeah. <clears throat> that's when you find the other part to it where it's like, what am I good at? Because if you pick what you're good at, you can put your purpose through that. So if it's like makeup, if you're really good at makeup and you like making people feel good, maybe you give makeovers. Yeah. Maybe you like there's a way to find what your purpose is inside of your talents. Yeah. And so I think that's the other half that's that where our I'm generation stuck at. before I'm, didn't have. Yeah. I'm yeah. trying to do that right now. Yeah. I am. 
It's rough. What oh. do you think your per- your um passion is? And That's purpose? what I don't know. It I takes mean, time. It takes time, but I'm like, I'm already halfway done with my sweat. I don't want to think about it. Okay, more wine. <laughs> um, <laughs> like time goes by so fast, you know. Like I feel like Why just don't you want to think about it. L- no, think about like me aging. Yeah. I don't know. I just I I want to be in my twenties. Like, are forever. you not proud of you of yourself? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> I feel like I should could be more proud. I mean, I feel like whenever I got my bio degree and I graduated, that was the proudest I've been of myself. But then, really, Tay? Yeah, but then like since then, I just I don't know. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Tay, you have so much to be proud of. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm very ind- like I've always been independent. You know, like I. That's what I'm. I'm like. Yeah. I mean, that, uh, okay. We should talk think about that yeah so i i've been independent you know i've always taken care of myself you know i bought my first car a year ago it's a lexus <laughs> period <laughs> and you had it bitch yeah. in college when i was like at a restaurant i'm not spending over 15 dollars yeah. you, you know me bitch i yeah. was like i ain't spending that you be like oh bitch oh. that's how you keep money though yeah, you know you had money in college bitch i did i you did. had money bitch. I took you, a- remember in that yeah. video you pulled out your band yes. oh that's my it. god Ooh. i remember that yes yeah yeah so i okay so i am proud of myself when it comes to that aspect of like being independent and being able to take care of myself for so long. I put myself through college, you know, I paid for it. I, everything I have, I've done it by myself. Um, so I'm, yeah, when it comes you, to that, I'm proud of myself. Can I ask a question? Do you think that because you were forced to do that, you don't feel as proud because it's something you had to do? No, I feel the opposite. I feel, okay. yeah, no, I'm, I'm honestly like, I used to be like pity, like would pity myself Hmm. because I didn't get a silver spoon in my mouth. But yeah. then I grew out of that. And I was like, no, because if I did, I wouldn't be as smart as I am now and as independent as I am now. So it, it taught me to be who I am today. So I'm, yeah, I, it's the opposite for me. I don't know. I'm, I'm glad, basically, is what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm glad that I went, I had to go through everything by myself and get everything by myself. Yeah. Yeah. It was only alarming because you did. You only said the bio degree. Yeah, sorry. And I, yeah, no, it's you okay. Know. But that's why I asked because I, I just I wanted to hear if that's how you felt. Down I guess like here, this inside. year, I've just I haven't loved myself as much as I should this year. So I those things like pass my mind. I'm just so hard on myself and like. I need to be nicer to myself. Basically, like this year, I have not been nice to myself as I sh- like as I should be. You know. I don't know. It's just been a really weird year. And I know it stems probably from my toxic relationship because it was he was very emotionally abusive. And so I kind of just like with dealing with him, I just stopped loving myself in a way. It's mm. pretty bad. It's pretty sad to say that. <laughs> I've actually haven't said this out loud yet, but it's making sense. It's all coming to me right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just, just, just came out of that. Yeah. Really? I've well, been in it for two and a half years. Jesus. <laughs> well, no, it's... Be- I, and I remember no, your, your yeah, story it's, and it's everything. Two and a half... Like, when I graduated is when, like, <clears throat> it started. And I was depressed, Hey, Like, you didn't even see, because I left Atlanta when it was starting, but I was having panic attacks. Oh, I was no. like... I know how that feels. You oh. never knew me to have anxiety mm-hmm. or, like... Like, I was out real bad. <laughs> like... Um, I got in a car accident because I was like panicking. While oh driving. my gosh! Yeah, I never even said that. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, baby. I did. Yeah, I was. I I'm was so really, happy you're okay. And I and I met my ex when I was depressed, and that's how yes. he got in. Yep. Because I wasn't in a secure place to know my boundaries, because you know me before, bitch. Yes. A dude, Always have boundaries. a girl. But he met me in a moment where I needed love. That's the crazy, you know, and that's where toxic relationships usually stem from. I feel like when you're just not in a secure place within yourself. Mm -hmm. So those toxic people, they'll like, or I don't want to say people, but just the toxic bond and everything comes Mm -hmm. when you're at a place like that because you don't, you're not secure enough to see the red flags for one. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, I saw the red flags, but I ignored them. I was like, whatever. (laughs) The red flags were six flags. You wanted to ride the rise, girl. (laughs) You wanted to ride the rise, girl. Whatever. I can fix it. That's my problem, too. I feel like I'm constantly trying to fix people. I was a fixer, too. Such a fixer. Not anymore. I'm like, I can fix you. I can fix you. Like, please just let me fix you. And then it ends up hurting me 10 times more. And it's just not good, you know? Yeah. So, um... I don't want you to feel like you're under a microscope, but I do. Um, ah, I, uh, well, you get you, to it. You, um, 
you were one of the most confident people I knew in college. Do you not feel that way right, right about me right now? No, I could just tell you're hurting. Yeah. I know. I'm holding my tears. I was so different. I know. Oh, baby. Oh, you're I'm holding me my cry. tears. You're going to make me cry. Stop. <laughs> oh, Tay, you're so... I mean, that's why when you said... Um, like, I, like, you were only proud of the degree. I was like, that's... The, I know. This is societal thing that everybody's proud of. Oh, she got a bio degree. But, like, fuck that. You, like... F- like you would get judgment and people would think things about you because you were like dancing and being a bottle girl in college and you were girl shaking that ass to pay for this bio degree. (laughs) And, um, I loved how you were always just like, bitch, I don't care. Yeah. And you authentically did not care. It wasn't even like a fuck y'all. I don't, you were just like, whatever. I don't Somebody would be mean to you or weird or judge you. And you'd be like, okay, are you hungry? (laughs) (laughs) Like, and your Literally, confidence. That's, yeah, um, that's a big thing. I, and I was, I remember. You come off so happy and so um, free that when you started telling me about your life and just everything, that I was like, wow. And, and so I just always saw a light in you as well. And so now I still see your light, but it's, it's, it's in it's a dense. treasure, a treasure, treasure chest. Yeah. It's locked up. It is. And I can tell... I agree. That person that you were with, devalued your insides me a lot. had to put that in the treasure chest. He would have yeah. took that. I know it's in there. He, t- he took a lot of it. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> I don't think he took it. No. I don't think it's. I think it's. It's hidden. Yeah. I th- it's there, babe. It doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. That is, that's a part of you. That's not something someone can take from you. Yeah. It's like a dog when it's scared. They go scurry away. We'll get behind. It. That's where it's at. You, it's going to take time and healing those layers. Yeah. It's going to, it's going to start shining. You're going to pull one piece of like, Oh shit. And then it's just going <laughs> to keep know. coming. So it, I'm just, it's there, babe. Yeah. But like you said, you, but you're identifying what's keeping it hidden. Oh yes. I'm and nice I'm so self-aware about yeah. it. You know? Yeah. yeah. I'm so self-aware. That's the thing. It's just, how do I fix it? And I know there's not a rule book. I wish there was, you know, but it's, I'm all, I'm constantly asking myself that. Like, what does loving yourself mean? Like, how, mm. how do I love myself? How do I take away this emotion and just put it towards me, you know? And, like, I know a lot of it has to do with, like, my childhood trauma, of course. Always does. Yeah, always <laughs> does. <laughs> always so, does. you know, like, my... Mommy and daddy. Literally. I mean, <laughs> I know I told you before, but... Oh, my, yeah, my, I know. My, yeah, my mom put me through six marriages, and, you know, it's just... Yeah. Men coming in and out. I have abandonment issues as well, yeah. obviously, that I'm trying mm-hmm. to deal with. Um, maybe I should go to therapy. <laughs> That'll help. Yeah. <laughs> That'll help. You know, I've been talking about this. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. maybe I need a little bit of therapy. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Therapy changed my life. <laughs> really? Oh, my God. I have a uh, therapy session tomorrow morning. Oh, my God. I love at it. At 9 a.m. But my problem is, did you have to go through multiple therapists to find the right one? It's like dating. Yeah. Okay. See, that's why I'm like, It's like oh. dating. It's like dating. It's like dating. Yeah, you gotta. <laughs> this one therapist, it was this dude, and he would just ask me like survey questions at first. <laughs> Have you thought about hurting yourself? No. <laughs> what if I was? Do you gonna... feel anxious today? I... <laughs> On a scale from zero to t- uh, uh, eight. <laughs> Okay. I How actually, are you feeling? Um, I just like, got diagnosed with severe anxiety, actually. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, Tay. Oof, I know. Hey, Who am baby. I? I am not the same person I was when I when we first last talked, I mean. So when are you going to start taking care of yourself? <sighs> I know. I'm trying so hard. I mean, you know, after my breakup, too, I was just going out and partying all the time, and it made me feel worse every single time. So I learned my lesson, and last week, before I came to Cali, actually... Um, I was just in bed for five days. Couldn't get out of bed. Just yeah. in bed all day, all night. Ha- cried, you know, <laughs> journaled. I'm, you know, been journaling. Um, but yeah, that's why I'm here because my roommates were like, we cannot leave you alone like this. We're so worried about you. Like come to Cali with us. So, yeah. Yeah. But I'm so happy I came because I feel like I'm healing right now with you. This is great. <laughs> I'm going to ask you again. Yeah. When are you going to start taking care of yourself? I know. Um, now. <laughs> Hopefully. What does that even mean, though? You know? You tell me. Like, I I do self-care things. You know, I like, I take bubble baths. I do things that I like. I read. I take bubble baths, you know? But I'm That's bullshit. S- <laughs> That's, bu- That's bullshit. <laughs> what does taking care of yourself mean? I want you to tell me. Only you can tell me. And, and I'm going to tell you <sighs> why. Self-care is about slowing down. Yeah. And listening to what you need. Yeah. 
And sometimes it's looking at your actions and your behaviors and like, hey, so for example, and I think this will help. Okay. <laughs> this is very transparent. I would usually never say this. Okay. Um, on camera, whatever. You're making me nervous. <laughs> um, I kind of told you before we started, but okay. um, earlier this year, I was really down. Like it was like around February. I was going out every night and doing like drugs. Yeah, same. <laughs> I was really sad. Mm-hmm. I was really sad. And um, I was doing so much. I would come home. The sun would be up. <laughs> and I had just got a graph. And he would have like four piles of shit. Like, because he was a puppy. Oh so, and I'd just be like, ugh. I'll do this. I'll need to sleep. And he would just be sad. And it just... Poor I was baby. really, I'm saying that I was doing so many things to feel something. Yes. Because I was so sad. I was like, I just don't want to feel sad. Can I just do something to feel, even if I am drunk, I feel drunk. That's crazy <laughs> that I you're saying high, this. If I feel high, I feel high. Yeah. I just don't want to be fucking depressed in the bed. Exactly. And so I was going to all of these things to feel something. And I was like, well, what am I going to them to feel? And I was like, I want to feel validation. I want to feel like I'm with people. Like, I would just be with people I didn't like just because I didn't want to be alone. Yeah. And so it, when I started realizing what I was going to all these things for, I was like, okay, I want this. I want love. I want this. Instead of going to those things that didn't make me feel that, I went to the things that made me feel that. Yes. And so whether it was a person that actually made me feel love or when, in moments where I didn't feel love, I tried to give it to myself. And it would feel icky and it would feel fake. Yes, but after that's a while, exactly how I feel. When, yeah. But it's also like this, though. It's not just you. Mm-hmm. It's like when you're not in a good place and someone's trying to be nice to you. Why the fuck are you so happy? <laughs> like, why are you so way? nice? You know, when you're just not in a good place. Yeah. So it's not even that. I think people think that that love you show to yourself, like it's fake, it's corny. But you don't even feel, you can't receive love when you're not in a place to. You, re- you hear things where the heart is. Right. And so at first it's going to feel weird. It's going to feel weird as fuck. You just have to go. You have to feel it. You got to do it. You have to feel it. You got to do it. And like, I'm, that's the thing. Those five days that I was in bed, like, I was like, when does this get better? But really, if you think about it, five days is nothing. But it it feels so long because. It felt like two years. Yes. Yeah. I'm telling you, it feels so long. It's like, when does this get better? I ask myself that all the time, you know? And obviously, I know I need to stop keeping in contact with number two. Um, That's probably. you still talk to him? Yeah, I mean, I uh, I know it's so yeah, bad. It's okay. It's so bad, and it's it gets okay. to a point where it's like, I know he doesn't. He's not in it like I am. Even, and it's so sad to say that because after he's done some fucked up shit to me, you know, and it's like, why do I love this person so much? Can we slow down? Yeah, let's slow down. Can you put your wine down? Of course. I want to try something. Okay. Okay. Um. Um, can you close your eyes? Yes. Okay. Right now. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. And, um, when you were speaking, you were speaking about him and you were saying, uh, you're in this, but you don't feel like he is. I want you to just describe how you feel. Just there. I want to start there. How you feel when it comes to this and why you're still in it and why you're still in connection with him. I feel sad. I want him to, I don't know. I'm like, it's like, I almost feel like, why am I not worth it enough for him to try to be better for me? (laughs) That is so sad to say. Wow. Remove the judgment, babe. Yeah, you're right. I'm always judging myself. It's okay. It's okay. Um, when when a lot of people are critical to us all our lives, that's all we know. That's how to what do. it is. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. There's a solution to everything we've yeah. been conditioned to think. So when we think something wrong, we're like, oh, the other thing. Yeah. But um, I want you to s- just go down the list and start everything with I feel when okay. it comes to him. It's him. Okay. I feel sad. I feel hurt. I feel traumatized. Um, I don't feel love. I feel unloved. I feel unimportant. Uh, I feel not worthy. Oof. Oof. Wow. Okay. This is like... Take oof. your time. Yeah. There's no rush. It's just, no, it's just like a lot. Like hearing myself say these things is like crazy. Like, um, 
Yeah. Uh, I feel unhappy. I feel depressed. I feel like I don't matter to him and I want to so bad for some reason. Um, yeah. Wow. Oof. That's about how I feel. <laughs> Anymore. But I feel like I miss him for some reason. I That's okay. The... Remove the judgment. Just I, say okay. the feeling. I feel like I miss the comfort. I feel... Like, I just miss being loved. Yeah. Oof. Is that the last one? I think so. <laughs> okay. I'm proud of you. Yeah. I'm going to open my That's eyes That's hard now. to do. Yeah, that was really hard. Yeah. Wow, I've never said that out loud. I've written it down, but saying it out loud is, it feels completely different. How do you feel hearing it? Like, what's wrong with me? Why do I why do I keep going back to that person if I feel all those things? Nothing that I said was positive at all. Oh babe. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you realize you just heard your feelings and the first thing you did was criticize them. I know. You know what? Stop. I know. Slow down, babe. It's okay. It's cause like I know what it is too. My mom, everything every time I made a little mistake all my life since I was little, criticized mm -hmm. me and made me feel bad about it, judged me. You know, I could never come to her with like no judgment. She I was just criticized all my life. And I, mm. I that's and I do that to myself and I notice it. Yeah. And actually you notice it a lot more than I do. Sometimes I don't even notice it, which is crazy. Cause like you saying that, but then it makes me realize I do this all the time. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I really do. Any time I, I make like a, a mistake, like I just, I'm so hard on myself about it. So hard for no reason. Yeah, we all make mistakes, but <clears throat> it's your inner child. It is. I have yeah. not healed her yet. <laughs> she is not healed yet. Yeah, but the thing is, um, you can't really heal her until you like you build a relationship with her. Yeah, she doesn't trust you. Mm -mm. And it's I don't have like, a relationship with her. Like in those moments, like what, what you just did, like you, you described all your feelings. And then the first thing you did right after was judgment and criticize yourself. Um, that was her. Yeah. Because that's what your mom did to her. And that's what she has been taught to do to her feelings. Mm -hmm. um, and also, <clears throat> adult you, it's become like a habit, like you said. And so in moments... You're doing it to her as well. Yeah. And so she's just, she don't trust you because you just like mom. Yeah. That's so true. Wow. I'm learning a lot of things today about myself. <laughs> but it's okay. I know. I love it. Yeah. Like I needed this. I'm this. Everything happens for a reason. I'm yeah. so happy I ended up here. <laughs> oh, me too, babe. Yeah. But the good thing about this though is that like you're so smart and you're so introspective. You, you're very intelligent. You're the type of person that if we just sit down and talk, you can go and do the work on your own when we leave. Yeah. Like, I don't have to, like, call it. Like, I will. But, like, <laughs> I don't have, like, like, I think just all of this will be a turning point for you. Because, Absolutely. like, you're like, wow, I've never said that out loud. Never. And the thing is, that's why it's so important to slow down. It's like we move so fast in life. We're doing this. We're doing that. We're paying the bills. We're doing this. I got to. And so we don't take a moment to sit back and actually think about how we feel. Yeah, we don't. That's Because a lot of times if we hear how we feel, we'd be like, I don't like that person. Yeah. Or Why it's not even it's person? even like someone telling you how you feel, like just you saying it out loud about yourself. Like I've never done that before. And that was oof. Like I needed to do it. Yeah. But it was like a cr different feeling. Like it felt I don't know. So I want to try something else. Okay. This one's not as... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's the same. It's just a follow-up from what we just did. Okay. So the first thing you did was criticize, but let's try again. When I act like you just said all those feelings again, and like, how do you... What do you think about it? Without well, trying to judge or criticize yourself. Yeah. Um, I think that I need to get out of that and get in touch with myself more, definitely. And have a relationship with myself because I don't, you know, when I sit alone in my feelings, like I'm not really nice to myself. Yeah. I'm mostly like I'm more so I'm not even like thinking about what what I what am I trying to say? Sorry. Um, Take your time, babe. Yeah. It's like almost like I'm so concerned about what he thinks of me or other people thinks think of me when I'm I'm not focused on what I think about myself. And like, you know, it's. 
yeah, like when I sit alone. Why do you I, think that is? I don't know. I don't know why I'm so. Try to think about it. Avo- I'm trying to fill a void. Probably. I'm just not. He- I've just never healed myself from everything that I went through as a child. And I'm just trying to fill a void, I guess. I'm so worried about other people loving me instead of loving me myself, you know? That's uh, the critical side. The compassion you, you think side. so? Okay. No, how it's do okay. I, no, it's how okay. do I be compassionate to it's myself? It's practice. It's practice. No, it's really practice. <laughs> um, so the way that helps me, judgment is adding good or bad, right or wrong. Yes. So whenever you have a thought that it should be this, not this, um, that's judgment. Um, but the compassion side of that is I, people had to like me in order for me to get love. Yeah. There we go. You grew up with a mom, like you said, that was overcritical. Mm -hmm. So you had to be hypersensitive in a way where I have to do something that makes her happy and that makes her like me in order for her to love me. Yes. In order for her to be a mommy. Yeah. And we have to understand that it's more than her just being a mommy. Your mom and your dad, they're the first people that teach you what love is. Yes. That is, wow. That is so true. That makes so much sense, too, if you think about it. They are. So you have been conditioned to think that, okay, yep. to get love, and this is supposed to be the greatest love, mom and dad, you know? So mm-hmm. to get love, they have to like me and I have yeah. to do things that make them like me. Yes. And so when someone doesn't like me, I'm not going to get love. And what happens? If you, there's a, people deal with those, that emotion, that fear, a lot of different ways. Some people go to drugs. Some people freeze up, fight or flight. Some people get aggressive. Yeah. Some people manipulate to yeah. try to get you to love me. A lot of people do different things, but the initial side of it is that you were taught that I had to be liked to be loved. Exactly. That's so true. Yeah. And that's why I'm constantly, yeah. So I'm like, why doesn't he love me? You know, like what, what can I do to make him love me? You know? It's, yeah. It's, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. So <laughs> I'm going to work on that and I'm going to work <laughs> on being more compassionate to myself. Sorry, guys. This is very like, and also, <laughs> this you, is very heartfelt. Also, uh, like, don't even rush the work if you're not there. I know. I think when people like realize these things or feel them, they're like, okay, I'm going to start today. Sticky notes in the bathroom. <laughs> like, you know, on it's the bathroom mirror. It's not an mirror. overnight process. Like, yeah, you don't have to, you really don't even have to start now. Like, the thing is, <sighs> healing is so Hard. yeah and it's a lot it it's a lot of practice everything. too and I, I watch your instagram videos too when you're talking about healing and like what but you will be crying at work <laughs> bitch it, it's hard it's hard like it, it's not just you go to therapy for an hour and then you do your day yeah bitch, no <laughs> you go to therapy at 9 a.m then you're sad for the rest of the fucking day because she made you realize i oh, hate shit. myself <laughs> shit damn it you're in the middle of sex like oh shit <laughs> you know so it's just like <laughs> so I just tell people, look, sometimes you're not in a place to start your healing. Yeah. And it's about remove remove the judgment. Yeah. I'm remove so, the judgment. You, you know what? I know tomorrow. so much judgment towards myself. I don't even know how to be compassionate to myself. Like those words that you said when mm-hmm. I that would have never come to my mind. And that's I need to practice that. I really do. You're doing it still. Ugh. I need to. Okay, what should I That's say? That's okay. I am going but, to. But I, I because I know you, yeah. I know it's more in like a pushing yourself. Yeah. I need to do this. I need to do this. That's no, what it is. Yeah. It's more of like, a, I want to start. I want to. Yes. Okay. That's being nicer to yourself. Yes. If it helps, um, I envision my inner child. Let me make sure this is still recording. I hope so. <laughs> oh, it is. This okay. is going to be a great episode. Yes, I can um, No, but something that I do is I think of my inner child as another person. Or like my child. That's why you prefer, or refer to it as her. You haven't healed her because you don't have yep. a relationship mm-hmm. with her. And she doesn't trust you. Yeah, I love Imagine that. Imagine yourself having. Uh, so we all have different moments in our lives that were kind of the most traumatic. And when we think about our sad childhood or whatever, it's a certain age. You go like, what's yours? You ain't got to tell me what happened. What age? How old were you? Like if you think of your worst or just the saddest, if you close your eyes, how old were you? Ooh. And there's several. 16. I have two. 16. Fif- no, maybe f- between 14 and 16. Mine was like 7, 8, and then my 16-year-old me. Yeah. High school me, and then like my, um, when I was being sexually assaulted, it's like, and when I was like 7, 8 oh, for so years. Oh, sorry, baby. Yeah. So 
I envision it in a way of like that's my child. Yeah. Because I I'm, I wasn't parented in the way that I need to be, so it's my job to parent him now. Yeah. And yes. to heal him. And so that's how like I just have to be nice to them. Yeah. I have to always be nice to them because I, I want to give the them way what you I look miss. At things. Did you <laughs> learn all this in therapy? I learned this in life. Oh. I no, just well, love I did learn it. A I lot love of therapy. The, the mindset that you have and like the way you look at things is so amazing. Well, thanks. I need to watch your podcast. <laughs> yeah, no, see, literally. Seriously. That's why I'm posting on Instagram. <laughs> Somebody said, okay, this is the second video I saw and I need to listen to this goddamn podcast. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, y'all, I keep trying to tell y'all. I know. But um, honestly, um, on this podcast, I've, I've said that the, the healing started two years ago when I got in therapy, but. It's funny. My healing actually started four years ago. Remember when I started doing those videos on YouTube where I was crying all the time? Yes. That's so when you it started. So you not do YouTube anymore? Hey, this. This will YouTube? Okay. Mm -hmm. Are your podcasts on YouTube? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh -huh. um, and I'm going to start like creative directing and like doing short films on YouTube. I haven't told That's them yet. That's so, amazing. Were you like a Calvin Klein model or something? I, I did a was campaign, with, campaign with them. Or Tommy Hilfiger. It was Calvin. Okay. It was Calvin. Okay. And I got, oh, shut up. What? Nothing. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> um, yeah, but um, it started then when I started doing those healing videos on YouTube to help heal other people. Yes. And I was doing it because I was like, it's going to help, help a lot of people. But I didn't realize that I was healing. Yeah, I was helping and you I was too. Help, I was doing the work behind yeah. the scenes. I didn't, Everything I didn't you're telling think them, of you're, it like that. You're telling yourself too. Probably. Yeah. yeah so. I didn't think of it like that. I just thought I was making a video to help people and I would move on with my life. But then I was healing. And so it's been four years, but through that, I've just like, I'm very introspective. Yes. And I, I can am, tell. I, I like, I spend a lot of time alone. I love myself. Um, I love that for you. You're such a beautiful person. <laughs> oh, thank you, babe. I love you. It took a lot of work, babe. I know it did, but it's, it's, and it's, it's, it's a journey. It's and a journey. I promise and you're still not, I know it. we're not always still there either. Like you're probably still on your journey, yeah, you know, but I am. You, even like since the last time we talked, you've grown so much. I'm just Aww. so proud of you. Let's get into that. Yeah. Let's get into that. Let's get into it. Also, <laughs> so seeing me now, uh, what's different? I'm, um, I'm curious because, you know, like just from what you, the Tariq you knew. Well, I mean, the Tariq I knew is still in there for sure. Oh, when yeah. When it comes to just like personality. Mm -hmm. But you're, you're, you've always been smart. I mean, we know that. But you're just like a lot smarter emotionally, it seems like. I don't know. You're, you've always been a light to me. I've always told you that. That has not changed. You've but always said that, yeah. You're just, I don't know. You're like a leader and like, Aww. yeah, like. I would definitely watch your podcast after this conversation. I'm telling you right now, it probably would help me a lot. Like, I love that you're helping people and that you love your job. Like, that's a job for you, but you love yeah, doing it. And you're, it. you're so great at it. I can just tell you're so great at it. So, yeah, you, you're you just, you're such a beautiful person. I love you so much. I'm so happy to be around you. <laughs> oh, Tay. I know. I was looking forward to seeing you, I swear, like, this whole week. I'm like, I really hope I see Tariq this trip before I leave because... I miss you so much. <laughs> oh, babe, I miss you too. I just miss like being around you and just, you just, you're, you just, ha I cannot be sad around you. You know what I mean? Like I just, I'm, even though I'm hurting right now, it's I'm like, just. It's because your sadness isn't anything wrong. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with being sad. I know. Like I'm like, I make space for that. Like, girl, I'll be sad too. I know. <laughs> girl, we all be sad. We all got our sad days. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> It's like holding those emotions. Yeah. Like it's not all fucking butterflies and we making money and getting to the bag, bitch. Not today. Not today. <laughs> I'm not in my today. bed. I'm getting to that bed. <laughs> yeah, girl. Shut up. I'm taking a clothes. nap, actually. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so <sighs> Okay, random question. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. this is so random. Oh no, I'm here for the question. Um you're gonna be like, what the fuck? Did you ever watch Game of Thrones? It was really random. But <laughs> so I didn't. random. I tried. You didn't like it. I tried. It was really slow in the beginning. And everyone it says, is. it's very, everyone does this. All it's of you fandom people, <laughs> just get through it. I'm like, no. bitch, it's been four episodes <laughs> and I keep falling asleep. No, you have to get through the first oh season. God. I swear. No, because I thought the same Can thing. Can I skip to the second? <laughs> Honestly, you could. You okay, could. okay. Then I'll because skip to the honestly, second. like it's really slow at the beginning because they're introducing all these characters in different scenes. Because I, I didn't even want to watch it at first. I actually, with number two, he made me watch it, and I was like. This sucks. And then after the two seasons, I was like, whoa. <laughs> Another reason I don't want to watch is because crazy. all of y'all hate the ending. 
Yeah, the last episode. And so this one, like, I don't want to be so. But like, it's worth it to watch. Serious? It is so worth it to watch. Okay, that was so random. I don't know what made me think of that. that is I just I I started late though. I just finished it. Maybe that's why. Like mm-hmm. I just finished it probably like a month ago, and yeah, it's crazy. You should watch it. It's so funny. <laughs> we have so much catching up to do. I know. <laughs> You don't we even do. know. You're like, do you still do YouTube? I like, know. You're like, you're like, I don't know. What the hell are you doing? I know. I'm like, like, nothing's really changed. I mean, I don't really. Yeah, I just, I work my three jobs and sleep and take bubble baths. That's my hobby. I love bubble baths, by the way. Period. Yeah. I love wine There's your now. Thing. Pinot Noir. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta teach me friends. Oh, period. Um, yeah, and I go out to eat a lot because you know i'm a foodie You've actually been a foodie so hungry um i'm i can't wait for us starving. to get after this <laughs> we were gonna take graf to the dog park we're gonna walk him and then go eat okay. i don't have time don't to have drive time. 20 yeah. minutes dog park 40 minutes come back 20 we're eating we're yes. gonna walk him for 15 and then we're gonna have a can we go to the beach we can do whatever you want <laughs> i love you we could do well, whatever what do you want. want to do. What What is your i'm just happy to be with you um me too yeah i love him <sighs> Um, I look at everything as intentional. Yeah. And um, absolutely spiritually as well. This is actually right here. They can't see it. But this is actually my like little shrine. Um, those are my crystals. Those are my candles. Oh, you got crystals. Um, yeah. And that painting is actually a representation of peace and serenity to me. Because one of my biggest dreams is when I retire, I want to get a cottage. And is that in Italy or? Yeah, it, it's. <gasps> It's, I, I was thinking either southern France or Italy or somewhere um, in Africa, but I'm, I feel like I don't know where it's going to be, but I want a cottage and I want to make bread and I want to sell it at the neighborhood market. Oh my like, gosh, that is so cute. I'm so serious. Can I come visit? Yes. <laughs> yes. And I'm so serious. That is so amazing. Wow. Yeah. So this is like my whole thing. Are and those forever flowers? Are those the ones that last forever? Like They do. I got those two years ago. What? As a gift. Two and they years. still look like that. Yeah. Wow. I wish you guys could see this. <laughs> it's right. So but um, I oh. said all that to say that I see everything as spiritually in- intentional. And it's so crazy because I knew I missed you. I knew I wanted to see you. But the pressure um, lately, God has taken me through different stages. And the stage that I'm in right now is that there are a lot of pressures that make me feel like I need to be doing something. I should be doing this. I should be doing this. Um, yeah. But God is teaching me right now. Don't listen to the pressures. Listen to me. Yeah. And he, and so the pressure was like, finish the script, finish the script. Because, you know, do you know I'm a screenwriter now? What? No, I did not know that. Oh, my God. <laughs> what don't you do? <laughs> <laughs> this is great. But, um, I'm so happy Yeah, for I'm you. a screenwriter. So I finished my pilot and I'm like working on What's, three projects what? right now. I'm working on a the film. The pilot is a shows. show? Yeah, a TV show. What show? It's a one hour drama. Oh my god! Yeah, and so we're taking. I'm we're, definitely gonna watch it. I can't <laughs> we're, wait. we're like shopping it around within the next couple of weeks, and so I'm doing my last rewrite. But it's like polishing; it's not like a real rewrite. Um, you're like you 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 come up with the scripts. I wrote hundreds of pages. Oh my! Yeah. Wow! What the fuck? Yeah, I mean it's only sixty six, but I mean like in all like That's still yeah. But anyways, a lot. yeah. Um, we're we're t- we're like gonna sell it soon and so i wanted to finish it because i need to start working on this film because i have a meeting with one of a huge actor next week who can you tell me i am not saying it on this ah we'll we'll talk about i'll tell you but i'm talking to them about possibly co-starring in the film and so uh i'm just like really i feel a lot of pressure yeah to get it done but i don't need to you don't need to. god is intentional and um there was a reason there's a reason you're here. Yes. Let me check this camera out real quick. Everything is intentional. And because you, this worked out, because you're here, I when I saw I feel so good. Me too. I'm and, this is the happiest I've been in a long time, actually. <laughs> oh damn, Tay. I know. I'm but I'm it's good. Like I'm so happy. That's good. But yeah. also, we gotta make you happier on the other I know. days too. Like I need to be happy alone. And, and and yeah, not only that, that too, yeah. But you also Aside from number two, the people around you that don't make you feel this way, yeah. you're still spending your everyday life with them and they're your friends. I and, know. and not not telling you to cut them out, girl. But the people well, are part of your of, everyday I've cut life. I've a lot of people off. <laughs> hey. After two weeks ago. You know, I never try to tell people what to do. You know, that's up to you. Yeah. But it's like, 
you should be able to feel this more with people in your life. I know. Friends, family, anyone. Yeah. Um, That's my other thing. I haven't been spending enough time with my family. Well, the and thing the is, people that I, you love in your family, not just because yeah, they family, not just because that's what I'm what yeah, was gonna yeah, get yeah. at. Like my when I go through something like traumatic and I'm depressed, like this makes me feel sad. But I can't be around my mom because it's just it makes me feel that's worse okay. and less chaotic. Yeah. But yeah, I haven't talked I mean, to my least, mom in months. Yeah, me either. <laughs> I haven't talked to her actually. Oh wow, it's been a very long time. Yeah, but I had to set boundaries. Yeah, and I, mean, I had same. to realize. Like I said, toxic is toxic. It doesn't matter who your family is. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And for me, like I just said with my inner child, I had to put him behind me and say, okay, we'll see you later because you, you're still doing, we set a boundary and you don't care. Exactly. And so I put him behind me. It was like, oh, okay, we'll see you. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Talk to you later. I don't hate you. It just doesn't take away. I love you from a distance. I love you from a distance. Yes. Absolutely. You're, You're unhealthy for me. Yeah. And it's, we got to do that with our mom and we got to do it with everybody else. Yep. And yeah, I mean, but even my dad's side of the family, I I feel like I need to spend more time with them. Probably would help a little bit, but. Oh, I have another question. Mm -hmm. So do you go to church? I don't. I listen to sermons, but I don't go to church. Yeah. I think the pandemic has like a lot of, and and then moving and. I, was I don't know, going to church his, seems like a huge commitment. Yeah. <laughs> you got to get dressed and iron your and clothes. No, I was asking because I was. <laughs> I just started watching it. Um, have you heard of 12 Stone in Atlanta? Mm-hmm. It's like a, it's a white people church. <laughs> I've I never heard of it. it. Yeah, it's like a really big church. They got a Starbucks inside. I mean. Are you serious? Yeah, in every single campus. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, wow. But it's great. I'm trying to remove you know? my judgment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's okay if they have a Starbucks. It doesn't change the word. It doesn't I don't know anything about. Word. I don't know anything about the church. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I like it. It's non-denominational. I like it because it's like I like growing up. I didn't go to church a lot because, well, actually, when I was in high school, I still like begged my mom to take me to church. I wanted to go that bad because it was like in high school and like they the way they explain the word is like a lot easier to understand because they compare it to like everyday mm-hmm. life mm-hmm. instead of like. I don't know. I've been to like Baptist church and stuff and I just don't understand what they're talking about. So. No, I know what you mean. It's it's about connection. I'm yeah. going to send you who I listen to. So she's yes. changed my life. She changed Oh my, my gosh, life. send it, please. Sarah Jake Sarah Jakes Roberts. Yeah. Um she has a podcast. You can watch her on YouTube. I've never felt more connected to she she doesn't even call herself a preacher. She's like, I'm not even a preacher, but she gives sermons. Yeah. Um that's amazing. Her dad is do you know who T D Jakes is? No. He's like one of the most famous black preachers of all time. Really? Yeah, he's really big. He's like <laughs> yeah, bestseller, New York Times, all that. But uh uh that's his daughter and she oh, just wow. she doesn't call herself a preacher she's like i'm not a preacher but you know but she's amazing yeah she will change your life i've like been so out of touch with do- dog <laughs> i've been so out of touch with god like these past couple of years it's crazy i'm trying to like find that connection again with him and so i've been that's what i was getting at yeah i've started watching church services online because you're right going to church is a big commitment <laughs> just a big commitment i just make my coffee and watch it online yeah i barely can make a date girl i don't know how i'm gonna make it to church girl you know what i mean and then moving and you gotta you go in there people want to i came here for the word girl i came here for the word exactly no but um i'm gonna send you some stuff yes um, absolutely please do i want to say thank you for coming yes um to the podcast this is great we need to go eat. No, because we're going to catch up even more. I know. I'm so um, excited. Because you don't even know I'm a screenwriter. I yeah. did not. That is so insane to me. I'm so fucking happy for you. Sorry to cuss. No, it's okay. We've been cussing this whole shit, time. Shit. That's amazing. So much has changed. I know. So life, much Life has is changed. so ever changing, like, though. Like, look at my house. By the way, I almost got lost in here two times. His freaking house is amazing. Is this a, this is a house? It's, I have the top floor. It's amazing. I love it. You remember, it's huge. like, my apartment. Is it two bedrooms? Three. Oh, I have to come visit you more often. Okay, that guest bedroom is mine. <laughs> Remember, um, my apartment in Atlanta was mm-hmm. smaller than my living room. It was so small. And like I, my living room alone. The kitchen was like in the. I don't. I, was it the was bedroom in the ago. kitchen? The bedroom was in the kitchen and the <laughs> living room. Yep, I slept where I filmed, where That's I cooked, we were, where I shit. We yep. were, <laughs> I said that all, all, the, all in one. All in one, inclusive, all inclusive. God. Yeah, you know what comes to mind too. I just I don't know what made me think of this, but Can you, you had a, that was two years ago. Though? That's crazy, and I remember you made a video. I think in that apartment, and it was like, 
Love yourself, bitch. We're drinking water. We're yes. Brush your teeth. Salmon, bitch. <laughs> Smart water. We don't do tap. We don't do tap. That was, yeah. That, I've watched that video like 10 times. Okay. I was loving it. I was like, this is such a vibe. I think you had sunglasses on and a, a fucking fur jacket or something. Oh, I know. <laughs> when I was in bed, yeah. It was so great. I love you, Tang. I love you more. <laughs> your light is there. You see it? Yes. It's You're there, bringing babe. it out. You're bringing it out of Which me today. Which lets you know he didn't take shit from you. You're right. And they never do. You're right. It's You're there. You're so right. You're absolutely right. You just got to, one, dig for it yourself, but also be around people that bring it out of yes. you. Yes. Yes. That's right. all. I know. I love you. This was great. I love you, too. I can't wait to see the video. <laughs> I'm so excited. Well, I love you guys. I thank you guys for listening. Um, yes. Thank you guys for having me. Well, this, thank you for having me. Of course. <laughs> you have any last remarks before I give my last remarks? Um, All I got to say is Tariq's amazing, and I love him so much. So, yeah. And I'm going to watch his podcast. And he's a screenwriter. What? <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Um, I want to say thank you to everyone watching. I want to say thank you to Tay. Yes. Um, I love you so much. I love you more. Your light is there, and we're just going to keep pulling it out. Yes. Yeah, and then Absolutely. the next time we pull it out, we're going to put some protections around it so nobody else can even dim it. Yes, um, definitely. Because if anything, the people around you should bring your light out more, not mm -hmm. make it dim. Exactly. You know, some people see a candle, and they want to blow it. Other people want to make it bigger. Bigger, yes. Um, and so that's that. The other part of it is, this is what that conversation is about, is about just sitting down and just having that conversation with your friends, your mm -hmm. family, um, just different people and being honest and slowing down in the process. Yes. We can have fun. We can talk. We can boom, 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 go back and forth. But at some point, like we did in here, slow down, get there, and then you can come back. I think some people get afraid to go there. Yes. Um, but sometimes going there is what's going to get you ahead. Yep. And I learned that talking to myself and about like saying my feelings out loud really helps actually it makes you it gives you like a whole different like perspective of things you know what i think you should try what voice memos like to myself yeah, like and don't like put it like like put voice like start a voice memo turn your phone over and just talk yeah and just like that's a good I idea i feel this and then not only that you'll hear not only how you feel, but how hard you are on yourself. Yeah. You're like, damn, I'm mean as fuck. Yeah, it's very true. You know, I, what I started doing was texting myself. Mm -hmm. But I feel like now I know even writing it down or like writing it in your notes is not the same as saying it, saying it out loud. It just, it hits more. I don't You're know. You're a talker. Yeah, like you, you realize a lot more when you say how, like, I feel this way. Whoa, like yeah. I just said that. Yeah. And, Whoa, I feel that. Like it's Like crazy. I'm a writer, but I'm also a talker. So yeah. a lot of my writing is done in voice memos and then I have my assistant transcribe it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, so I love you. Yeah. But okay, thank you guys. Yes, thank that you. That was the longest goodbye. <laughs> Here's the last one. Yes. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. To the girls weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers to that. Oh my gosh, the reference. You need more okay. wine. Yeah. Okay. Bye guys. Bye Love guys. You.